Big news, MasterCard announced that it will soon allow cryptocurrencies to use its network. Is it finally happening? Are alternative currencies going mainstream? In this edition of Commerce Code, cash is dead. Long live alternative currencies. I'm Silvio Tavares here in San Francisco on February 26th. This is Commerce Code, brought to you by DCA, the Digital Commerce Alliance. It's great to be with you. There has been so much talk over the past decade about cash payments going away and being replaced by new innovative payments technologies. Bitcoin was created all the way back in 2009. And it was supposed to eliminate the use of cash and credit cards. But in all this time, it never really happened. But then came the news the week before last that DCA member company MasterCard, one of the world's largest payment networks, was going to allow cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin to use its network to complete financial transactions. So that got us thinking here at Commerce Code. Could this be? the beginning of the end for cash, and a new beginning for alternative currencies? Well, maybe. One of the biggest alternative currencies that most Americans already hold is loyalty points. You know, those points that you earn from your airline every time you fly with them, or you earn every time you stay at a hotel. Some industry analysts estimate that there are over 200 billion, with a B, $200 billion worth of loyalty points held by American consumers alone. And right now, because of the pandemic, most Americans can't use them on flights and hotel stays. As it turns out, an enterprising company called Payout Networks has developed a technology that enables consumers to use those loyalty points at any merchant, just like they would use a credit card or cash. More than any other alternative currency, paying with points has the opportunity to revolutionize how we engage in commerce. Because unlike cryptocurrencies, most of us already have points right in our physical and mobile wallets. Today on the show, we go to Bozeman, Montana to speak with the founder and CEO of Payouts Network, Keith Smith. We discuss how alternative currencies, including paying with points, are the next big wave in digital commerce. Good morning, Keith. How are you? I'm great, Sylvia. How about yourself? I'm doing great. It's actually a pretty sunny day here in the San Francisco Bay. Where are you today? So I'm in Bozeman, Montana. We've got snow on the ground. It's sunny and it's a balmy negative five. Negative five. Yeah, I remember. I grew up on the East Coast, so I remember what that feels like. But when the sun is shining, it's not too bad. Keith, great to have you on the show today and really excited to learn more about Payouts Network. Many companies have attempted to get consumers to pay with points because that's one of the key capabilities of your company, but it hasn't really taken off here. Amex has been able to get it to work, Amazon, FIS. But other than that, there really haven't been any companies that have been super successful at it. What, What is your company's approach to paying with points at the point of sale? Our belief is, is that loyalty points is the next currency. And in order to accomplish that, we need to be able to give cardholders the ability to convert points in real time. And it needs to be easy and fast and convenient. Allow the cardholder the ability to redeem points for purchases that they select and communicate with them in the methods that they prefer. We don't want to require the cardholder to have a different application or to have to go through a pre-selection of getting a gift card or trying to key up a pre-purchase of points. And so Being able to do that is a key part of what we believe is standing in the way. There's challenges out there around locations that you can redeem because of the requirements for point of sale integration or point of sale training of employees. And so we built the technology to basically ride in the cloud and not have to touch the point of sale, not have to train the employees and be able to communicate one to one with the cardholder. And we do all of that, Silvio, as well, in a white label solution, which I also believe is really important to not displace the brand of the issuer or 
for the loyalty point program operator. So being able to redeem outside of the gas station at regular retail locations online or in store. So you've really eliminated a lot of the friction consumers face when they're trying to redeem points and you just make it really easy. But do you think consumers are expecting that? Is there something that like maybe has changed in the marketplace over the last year that's really favoring consumers' usage of pay with points technology? Yeah, I think there's a couple of different drivers. And one that's obviously affecting all of us around the world is COVID and the lack of travel. And travel rewards, from my perspective, has always been the preferred redemption method or reason to redeem points. And I think that reduced travel is a big driver in people looking to be able to utilize those points and monetize those points in different ways and really turn them into cash. I also believe that we are consumers that are being trained by better technology. And this goes back to the Amazon experience and being able to shop on Amazon and redeem your points. I think that's super enticing. Now they've seen huge growth and adoption from consumers. And I think also this self-serve going back to mobile banking and mobile wallets and being able now to tap and pay. And I think all of those trends are really driving consumer behavior and their desire to pay with points and be able to do split tender. So I think we're seeing those in the last year really amplify uh, the demand. It makes sense. You know, most of us can't travel and I love to travel and I can't, right? And so now I have another opportunity to use my points for other things that I like. Could be digital goods like, you know, an Apple TV subscription or many other things, including in store. Now, one of the things you talked about was just like the whole enablement. And if you think about pay with points, you're enabling consumers to pay with a different currency other than dollars or a national currency. Instead, you're enabling them to pay with points. Now, we've all been watching and have I've heard the news about the growth of cryptocurrencies. You know, MasterCard just made a recent announcement saying basically they're going to enable people to use cryptocurrencies on the MasterCard network. Is that something that you guys are working on? Because at the end of the day, you've enabled a new currency, which is points. Will you go on to others as well? When we built this company, the vision was to be currency agnostic. In certain instances, you know, we are issuing digital vouchers and running that across the credit card rails of Visa and MasterCard. And then at the same time, we're helping FIS and their fulfillment of loyalty points to cash. And then we have Merchant E Solutions, who is out there doing same day merchant funding. They're doing uh, compensation, earned wage access. They're doing B2B payments, different use cases. But the currency is either US dollars or other government currencies, but it also could be in house currency. So loyalty points to these vouchers. So we look forward to supporting crypto and other currency methods as they are created. So we are big proponents of adding other currencies to the platform, delivering the best experience for the originator and the recipient is really our objective. And what we're processing is somewhat secondary to us. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I do want to ask you a little bit of a technical inside baseball question because a lot of the listeners on the show are actually CTOs and and technologists. When you carry a pay with points transaction over your network, do you transform the transaction from basically points into dollars? So when the transactions are actually floating across your network, have they been converted into dollars? Or is it like a points unit that's actually on the transactions as they flow across? And the reason I'm asking is if you think about about the future where you have all these different types of digital currencies flowing across a network that are denominated in different units, et cetera. It seems to me that would be pretty complicated and may take some time for networks to upgrade to support. And I'm just wondering whether Payouts Network is configured to do that basically now because you always knew you were going to be handling all different types of currencies. Yeah, that's a great question, Sylvia. We did anticipate this. So we handle the transaction on our platform. So when we do the exchange, first of all, we're looking at the transaction and we're scoring it on behalf of the program operator. And then we're applying the rules associated with that. Could be the currency conversion calculation, converting points to cash based on the type of merchant, based on the dollar amount of the transaction, time of day, day of week, month of the year. And so we handle that. And then that conversion process, what is that endpoint that we're trying to convert and push those points into cash? Where are we trying to land those dollars? And what are the requirements of the networks to do that? And so we handle all of that on our platform. And I think that's a big part of why we're able to have a great client like FIS, where we're able to be able to calculate and do all of that on our platform and not require them to go back and recode and modify. And at the same time, on the merchant side, we aren't having to ask them to do anything different. So we handle it all end to end and calculate that. And that's why I'm very bullish on being able to support additional currencies, whatever those are, because of our rules, engines, and algorithms that we have. 
Makes a lot of sense. And you've built really the platform for the future of payments, not just the present. Now, Keith, you've got a fascinating background and our paths have crossed in the past at a variety of the companies that you've started. You've created numerous successful payment technology companies like CoreFire. But the question I want to ask you is, what excited you most about launching this new company, Payout Network? Because you've done a lot of things, been very, very successful but yet you decided, hey, I want to start this company that will enable not just paying with points, but all of these new digital currencies to be used both at the physical point of sale and online. So what what drew you to this opportunity? I think that when I started looking at payments and where they're headed, the ability to come in and displace the old legacy payment methods was one, super intriguing to me because it touches on my background for 30 years in payments. But the second part was the market is so big that is still riding on legacy technology and legacy payment methods. And so to be able to drive scale in a very short period of time and help big enterprise clients not only lead innovation in their markets, but also being able to dip down into the SMB market and help that marketplace as well was a great challenge. And so now we sit here with what I truly believe is the industry leading platform for disbursements. And we've been able to anchor ourselves around creating a new currency of loyalty points at the point of sale without having to mess with point of sale terminals, as we talked about, or requiring mobile app and allow these companies that have a lot of scale to pivot very quickly and deliver value. Not only does the originator benefit, but the consumer benefits as well and the merchant benefits as well. And so we really have this opportunity to drive technology where the whole ecosystem benefits through being able to convert from the old way to the new way. So definitely a huge driver is the opportunity to really change payments and drive how they're going to be processed in the future for loyalty points and B2B and B2C payments. Fascinating. Big opportunity there. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't ask about Bozeman, Montana, which is where Payout Network is headquartered. I kind of have this picture of you on the plane, you know, on a beautiful horse with cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. And then you kind of pull up to a barn and inside the barn, you expect to see horses. But in fact, there's just a big data center in there. Is that really what it's like? And what was the draw to headquartering the company there in Bozeman? It, it is like that. If okay. you pulled up to our office, we might pick you up on a horse. But the draw really was that having grown up in Atlanta and built the previous companies in Atlanta, one was Bozeman has a great airport. And so you really can get anywhere you need to get to. The second part, you know, this is a very intellectually curious community. It's very young, very vibrant. There's a lot of really well-educated and well-experienced people who moved here for the lifestyle. When I moved here now six years ago, this town was a lot smaller, but it was really high quality, a lot of talent, a great lifestyle, and the ability to draw investors and in, clients and has been actually surprisingly faster and I would say easier than I had expected. And there's just a charm about Bozeman and you know people want to come here and visit and they want to do business. It's a very great place to build a company and community is very supportive and designed for this. I think this is the high tech of the West uh, stuck here in the Rocky Mountains. Well, you know, I think that's one of the enduring lessons of 2020 and the pandemic. And we all had to figure out how to do our business from wherever we were. And your company and and you as a founder were ahead of that. You realized that you could actually do high tech business from anywhere, including one of the most beautiful places on earth, the beautiful plains and mountains of Bozeman. But Keith, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It was a real pleasure to speak with you. And I'm very much looking forward to having you back on the show in the future. I appreciate it, Sylvia. It's a pleasure to be on with you and look forward to continuing our great relationship. That's Keith Smith, the CEO and founder of Payouts Network. Talk to us from Bozeman, Montana. Coming right up, some closing thoughts on alternative currencies. As we learned on the show today, The way we all pay is undergoing a fundamental transformation. The world's largest banks and payment networks, including MasterCard and Visa, they're now embracing rather than shunning alternative currencies, including points and cryptocurrencies. The speed and pace of consumer and merchant adoption, it's still anyone's guess. But one thing is sure, the days of cash transactions are numbered. And here's a tip. If you want to learn more about the key new trends in alternative currencies, register now for DCA's next online forum and one-on-one meetups. DCA's conference entitled Commerce Reinvented is on April 13th via Zoom. 
Register now at digcomall.org forward slash online dash forums forward slash. That's D I G C O M A L L dot org forward slash online dash forums forward slash. See you there. You know, everyone's going to be there MasterCard, Discover, Rakuten, FIS, Microsoft, everybody. Come on, register now before all the seats are gone. For the Digital Commerce Alliance, take care of yourself and take care of each other. God bless you. This is Silvio Tavares, signing off.